right. Well, welcome everybody. I'm so glad to see you guys here. Welcome. So glad that Ainsley's here and <laughs> awesome. So I get the pleasure of coming today and sharing with you guys about forgiveness. My name's Teresa and I'm volunteering here and um, we've just, our family, I have a daughter here, Presley, who has been impacted by the children's ministry here at Arizona Deliverance Center. And so it's a, a privilege to come and share with you guys um, just uh, on forgiveness today because forgiveness is such a, a powerful powerful thing. So I'm going to open us in prayer and then I'm going to share some things with you guys. I've got kind of a, some fun videos and then we'll wrap up and we'd love to spend some time praying with you guys and, and sharing with you and just uh, meeting with you guys one-on-one -on -one as a family if you're interested. So Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for forgiveness, Lord. We thank you that you sent Jesus to this world to, to die and, and um, on the cross, Lord, and, and shed his blood for us and, and be risen so that we can be reconciled with you, God. So we thank you. We pray for each child here today and each family. They're such a blessing. So we just invite you here, Lord, and we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Lord. So forgiveness. So I put this picture of this cross because it's so important to understand that only through the cross that Jesus died on and came back to life that we can be forgiven, right? We can claim forgiveness. That only through the atoning death. And what does atoning mean? Atoning means we can be reconciled, right? Um, we can be, it can be wiped out. Our sin can be wiped out, erased. So that only comes through the forg forgiveness, only comes through Jesus Christ. There are so many blessings in that word forgiveness, right? It's such a powerful, powerful wor word. Um, we're going to touch on a few a few of those blessings today, we would be here for hours if we talked about all the things that come from the blessingness of, of forgiving um, others and receiving forgiveness. So I'm going to touch on a few of them today. But uh, what I wanted to share first before we start is that, you know, back in the Old Testament, for those of you that have read the Bible, there's some really crazy stories in there about how they had to have their sins forgiven, the things that they would do to try and atone their sins, right? And a lot of those were blood, those came through blood sacrifices of animals, right? That was before Jesus came and set the standard for us. So it was a blood sacrifice and that's very symbolic of what Jesus did for us, right? He shed his blood so that we can be forgiven of our sins and be reconciled with God and spend, um, uh, spend eternity with him someday. Okay. All right, we're going to jump into it. So, who needs to be forgiven and why? Anybody have any ideas on who needs to be forgiven? All of us. All of us? That's a great. Anybody disagree with that? You disagree? <laughs> no. <laughs> we all need to, right? Whether we're we're going into kindergarten or we're grandmas and grandpas or we're teachers or we're moms and dads we all need forgiveness no matter what age we are right mm -hmm. and why is that anybody have any ideas on why we need forgiveness because yeah because guess what yeah. romans 323 i'm going to try and give you guys as much scripture because that's where we should look for all of our answers right is the bible so in the book of romans God tells us that all of us, all, I underline that word, all of us have sinned, and that means we fall short of the glory of God. And one thing that's really important here is I think sometimes kids might think, well, or, or other people might think, well, I haven't done anything really, really awful. I haven't done any really bad things. But really, the essence of sin I don't know if anybody knows Derek Prince, but I love listening to him and he does a really good job explaining. He says that the essence of sin is not doing a particular thing or some ginormous crime, 
but it's really robbing God of the glory that's due to him, right? So when it says we've all fall short, you know, God is sinless. Jesus was sinless, right? And because there's sin in this world, we're kind of down here. We, we, we fall short, right? So we need, we needed a way to be able to be back up here with God, to be reconciled someday. And, and, and Jesus is the answer. So we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. That's why we need forgiveness. Okay. Um, in the Bible, it does not that I can find mention any time of somebody that doesn't need forgiveness. Has anybody ever read about anybody that doesn't need forgiveness or know anybody that doesn't need forgiveness? No, me either. So that's really important to understand that it's not that we're such a horrible person or we've done, you know, worse things or not as bad of things as somebody else, but we, we've all fall short at some point, okay? Um, we need forgiveness for our sins no matter how big or how small they are, right? So if we've done a really, really bad sin or something that might be just a, a little bit of a sin, we think we still need forgiveness for that, right? Um, and for those of you, uh, the adults, um, and maybe even some of the kids that work, have been working through their deliverance, forgiveness is essential for deliverance, right? It's absolutely essential. Oh, going the wrong way. Okay, so I just came up with a couple ideas when I was thinking about forgiveness, about different kinds of forgiveness, kind of breaking it down. And I, I listed them here. There's a few of them we're going to spend a lot more time on forgiveness from God and forgiveness to others. But there's a few of these other ones that I think are really important to, to talk about. So I added them in here in my little chart. Oop. Get used to this clicker. Okay, so forgiveness from God. Romans 3.23, like we just saw before in the slide before, tells us that we all need forgiveness from God. Every single one of us, right? And we talked about in the first slide that we can only receive this kind of forgiveness through the cross of Jesus Christ, right? Only through him. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Right. Amen. So we all know the story, I think, of Adam and Eve, right? About how sin came into the world. You remember that story? Have you read that story about Adam and Eve? You know that story? Yeah? He has. Yeah. So that tells us that sin got brought into the world, and that's why, so we're all sinners. It doesn't mean, again, that we're, we're horrible people or we're worse than anybody else, but that's sin got brought into the world, and God, being so loving and merciful, he had to come up with a plan, right? Because our sin is what, if the, here's us and God, and then our sin separates us, right? So we need a way to be brought back to God. So God had a wonderful plan in place for us to be able to be reconciled with him, and that was Jesus, right? Right, Press? Um, so it isn't a question of if we need forgiveness, it's if we'll receive that forgiveness, right? Because it's there. Hi, Kelly. It's always there. It's God's always... He's, he's merciful and he, he's very ready to forgive us. So it's, it's a question of if we'll receive that forgiveness. I mentioned at the beginning the blessings that are associated with forgiveness of God are innumerable. They're many, right? So many positive things come when God forgives us. There's, there's change that happens in our life. I have a scripture here from the book of Micah. 719 it says he will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities you will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea so i underlined again because what does that tell us it means that we don't usually just need forgiveness once right i don't know about you guys but there's been times in my life where i've needed forgiveness like a hundred times a day we need it over and over right and he's compassionate enough that he will do it again. So it says he will again. Sometimes I, I giggle because I'll, I'll think of a picture of, of God and thinking, watching us and thinking, oh boy, here they go again, right? But he's ready. If we're ready, every time we repent and turn back to him and ask for forgiveness, he's ready to do that, right? The, how cool is that? And it says not just, this is what I really, really want you guys to understand is that 
It says he will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. That's pretty, the depths of the sea. Anybody know how deep the ocean is? Deep the sea is? Pretty deep, right? We had this cool app a long time ago where it would show like every mile that you'd go down, like how dark it was and how far down it was. So I think of that picture of that. He throws them into the very bottom. So he can't, we can't, we can't go fishing for them and take them back up, right? They're gone, right? They're gone. Yeah. Thank God is right. Yeah. Thank God. Um, so we know that he's ready to do it, right? He's eager to forgive us. He's glad to forgive us. And not just temporarily, he's ready to just wipe it clean. It's erased, right? Which is a big, a big difference. Um, so in order to receive this forgiveness from God, what do we do? So we know he's ready to give it, but how do we receive it? We got to know how we receive this forgiveness, right? We must, we must be believers, right? We must follow God. We must love him with our whole heart, right? We have to put our faith in him. And guess what else? We need to be honest with God. We have to ask for forgiveness. We have to, um, we have to be honest with him about our sin, right? We have to confess. There's a lot of power in confessing our sins. And you know, the thing is, is that we're not tricking God. He already knows all our sins, right? But there's power in us verbalizing things. There's power in what we say with our mouths and our, our words. So we need to confess those sins so that he can forgive them, right? So in Micah 17, in this verse, it tells us that he doesn't simply just breeze over it or forget it partially. He casts them into the sea. He casts them into the sea. He, they're completely erased. Not only does he blot out our sin or our iniquity, but it's is as it never took place. Isn't that cool? I, I think it's pretty cool. I'm thankful for that. And guess what? That's what we must forgive others. That's a, a, a condition as well. So there's a verse here. Oops. Okay, I'll do that now next. But a verse here that I'm going to share in the next slide that says that a condition for God forgiving us, and this is what we don't talk about a lot, but we have to forgive others, right? But first, before we talk about that, we're going to mention, for, just touch on forgiving ourselves. Has anybody ever had a hard time forgiving themselves? Yes. Me, for sure, right? Even when we have this deep understanding of how God loves us so much and how eager he is to forgive our sins. And I've done this personally where I thought, yes, thank you, Lord, you've forgiven my sins. But then we find out we're still harboring that. We're still embarrassed and ashamed. And we're holding on to, to that. And I put this before forgiving others because I don't know how well we can forgive others if we can't forgive ourselves, right? And in Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine, 39, just a little snippet of it, it says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So that means we got to love ourselves. That's a tricky sometimes, right? And as a parent or a wife or a husband, sometimes we're really good at showing love to people around us, but we're not good at showing love to ourselves, right? And forgiveness is essential in love. That's, that's how you, that's a, a key piece of love is forgiveness. So if our heavenly father is quick to forgive us and isn't holding our sins against us, then we need to forgive ourselves and it, it can be tough. So we need to follow God's lead. That's our example. That's what we're always searching after, right? Is, is becoming more Christ-like in, in following, imitating what Jesus does. So when we follow God's lead and forgive ourselves as he forgives us, then guess what happens? All these cool things. Now we talk about some of the blessings. We release shame and hatred and condemnation. Those are just three big ones. Um, and guess what that does? So that gets released and it's like, oh, this weight lifted, right? And it tears down strongholds in our life. And if anybody knows what that means, so there's a, a, a our friend Julie does a great um, 
class for women on Monday nights and Tuesday nights, and she talks a lot about tearing down the strongholds, right? And you picture it like a big wall of all these bricks with shame and hatred and condemnation and fear. And each time we pull one of those out, it's like that wall gets broken down. So that's breaking down the stronghold. It's loosening the hold of the enemy in our life. So very, very important that we forgive ourselves. Make sure I didn't forget anything on here. And you know what? When we're not forgiving ourselves, it's also a block to the way that God, for it can, there can be lots of things that happen. Blocks to healing, blocks to the way that God might want to use us for his kingdom and to serve him in our life. So it's absolutely essential. We need to be able to forgive ourselves in order to properly and fully forgive others. Oh, okay. Forgiveness to others. This is a big one. This is where we're going to spend a, a good amount of time. So Matthew 6, 14, 15 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, and what are our trespasses? We're kind of referring to our sins, right? Our iniquities. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So that's really good news, right? That's the good news. But, there's a but in there. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Ooh, yes. Wow. So that's a, that's a condition, right? That's he's saying. That's pretty clear, right? So he's saying he's ready and willing and so glad to forgive us. But guess what? We got to forgive others. We have to. We have to do it. And I think that th this is very hard for people to do. And I think that a lot of times people will see that that's, it's, it can be a hindrance to our prayers, right? Not that God doesn't care and he doesn't hear him and he's not ready. But there is a condition that needs to be met. And a, oh, another one. I don't have it up here. Well, maybe I do. Do I have it up there? I'm going to go back. Well, no, I, have, I added in another one. But in Matthew 22, it says, Jesus said to him, so he's talking to a Pharisee here, right? The Pharisee was asking, and, and he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So again, so we have to, when we go back to two, we have to love our neighbor. And how do we love our neighbor? Part of it's forgiveness, right? We can't say, oh, I love you so much, but I'm not forgiving. Forget it. It just doesn't work like that, right? So that shows that with that verse before two, we have to love our neighbor as ourselves. So we got to forgive ourselves, we forgive our neighbors. And who are they referring to as our neighbors? Just your next door neighbor? Everybody, right? Everybody. Our friends at school, our teachers, our parents, our grandparents, people at the store, whoever it might be, right? And guess what? And most importantly, our enemies. Sometimes it's really easy to forgive maybe our little brother or maybe not. I don't know. Um, but it's really important that we have to forgive our enemies too. Another verse that goes along with this, and I just think it's important to see how many times, and this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a few verses. There are so many verses. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Uh, no, that's okay. We're glad you're here. There are so many verses that talk about forgiveness that I just added in a few, but this one that we see in Mark 11 it says, and when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, right? We got to forgive him. So that's that condition that we talked about, right? If we want God to hear our prayers and forgive us, we have to forgive others. So it says, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But, there's the but again. I didn't underline it. I was going to underline it. But... If you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Yeah. So it says that quite a few times in the Bible. So he's really, sometimes when, when God tells us things many, many times, there's a reason, right? It's super important. 
So that's a, a important thing when we think about forgiving others. And in fact, in the Lord's Prayer, who knows, we call it the Lord's Prayer. In Matthew 6.10, Jesus tells us how to pray, right? And, and he says, and forgive, we, he's telling us how to pray, Lord, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So that's in us, he's assuming, hey, you better be doing that, right? We have to forgive others. We cannot come to God, you know what, and I've done this, I think a lot of people do this, we come to God and we have this laundry list of all these things, like, well, Lord, I, please forgive me for this and for this and for this and for this. And then we're holding unforgiveness in our heart, right? It can't work like that. Okay. Actually, I want to back up real quick here. Um, so what I, I do want to mention, along with forgiving others, so we have to, now we see, we have to forgive, we have to forgive others, you know, everybody, our enemies. But I also think it's really important to bring up, this doesn't mean that we um, minimize that we're, when we forgive other people that we're minimizing or we're saying we're, we're um, excusing what people have done to us, right? Or we have to just continue to allow people in our lives and be a doormat and let them do bad things to us. There's times where, you know, people have done some really, really bad things. And so it might not be we can still forgive them but we might not we might not be able to let them back into our life at that point, right? Or we might need to keep a distance, or um, you know, maybe it's not healthy. We can only um, we're, we're responsible, and we can only control ourselves, right? So while it's ideal in an ideal world, it would be wonderful if if we could forgive one another mutually, and we can be in a relationship or a friendship. But sometimes that doesn't happen, right? So. We always need to forgive, but that doesn't mean, I think sometimes people think that it's a, a sign of weakness or something, but really it's a strength to be able to forgive people, right? So it doesn't mean that we're saying, hey, what you did to me was okay, because it's not, right? It's not okay when someone's treating you badly or, you know, does something, you know, because there's some really horrible things. So it doesn't mean we're saying, hey, that's okay. It's saying, it's not okay, but we're going to forgive you anyways, right? So keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that we need to say, hey, you keep hurting me on the playground, so I'm going to keep letting you come back, you know, or you keep stealing my money, but I'm going to forgive you and keep giving you more money to borrow, right? Sometimes we have to draw lines. We have to say, nope, this isn't healthy, mm -hmm. and we, we pray for people, and we're going to talk about what we can do in those situations in a minute, okay? So... What happens when we don't forgive? What if we're like, nope, this is too much. Someone went too far. This is too hard to forgive someone. Anybody ever felt like that a little bit, Saranis? Like, I don't know, yeah. that went too far. Yeah, yeah. And I know personally some of these things have happened to me. So when we don't forgive, we feel like, nope, you don't deserve it. What happens? Lots of icky things can happen, right? And sometimes these things happen really, really quickly. Sometimes they happen over time. Um, strife. Anybody know what strife is? Kind of a big word. Just means kind of contention, anger, struggle, right? Yeah, Argu yeah, arguments. Hatred, that's a really strong word, right? But that happens. That happens when we don't forgive. Hatred comes into our heart. And guess what? Sickness happens too. We can be, there is, um, the results of unforgiveness can be very, very physical. Now, this doesn't mean that every time we get sick that we're not forgiving somebody. We get a cold and we didn't forgive somebody. Or we get an ear infection that we didn't forgive somebody. But guess what? Those of us that have, are, have been working and, and in deliverance and some of the ministers and counselors here and volunteers could attest to this that a lot of what happens when they help people, they find out that all the hatred they have and the bitterness or they're sick, um, physically sick, those things will manifest that they're really harboring unforgiveness and it could be for years or decades, right? So 
we can, we can become physically sick. I know I've had times where I've had some really stressful, you know, horrible things happen. I haven't been quick to forgive. And guess what? I do I get a migraine headache or I wake up and I just feel ugh, gross. So that can really, unforgiveness can definitely manifest physically. We can become bitter, right? We, bitterness is not a good thing. We can be tormented. And that's a really strong word too, but we can. Some, it becomes all consuming. We're, we're angry. We're tormented, right? And we can become resentful. And again, this, this is just a small little list of the things that can happen. I'm sure people can think of in their own lives, especially adults, things that have happened. But we can become resentful. And the resentment, I think a lot of people could agree, this happens more so with people that are you're really close with, right? Mm -hmm. In your own house, your family. Um, yeah, so these are all, these are not good things. Um, the other thing is, all the, so unforgiveness, when we're holding on to that, that is an open door for the enemy, right? He's like, yay. Look at that. What happens when you keep a door open at your house? Like flies, mice, dirt, whatever. It's, they're all like, yeah, let's go in, right? It's cold out here. Let's go in or it's hot. Let's cool off. Same thing that the enemy, who's our enemy? The devil, right? Satan. Yeah. He's like, oh, look at that. Yep, right over there. They're holding on to unforgiveness. Let's get them. Let's make them sick. Let's make them bitter, right? And then that takes away with, uh, from all the awesome things. It, it shifts our mind too, right? So we're just focused on all these bad things when God has really good things for us to focus on, right? So it, it takes our, our mind off of Jesus and it, we're harboring all these things. So we got to close the door quick, right? Quick, quick, quick. So the key is quick. So when you feel this stuff happen, when you're like, oh man, I got really offended or I got really hurt, we got to catch it fast, right? Because Satan's fast. Satan's quick. So that's the key is how quickly, because these things do happen. They have everybody, it's going to happen sometimes, you know? So we have to catch this stuff very quickly and we have to repent and say, oh man, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry that I took offense or that I, I'm having a hard time forgiving. Help me. Help me. Holy Spirit, help me to do that, right? And God's quick, just like we said. Okay, I'll check my notes and see if there's anything else in there. I think that might be it. Yes. Okay. Okay, this... I thought was kind of neat. Maybe I'm just kind of silly, but I was doing some Google searching on forgiveness. And guess what? I found from the Mayo Clinic, they're not a Christian place, right? It's not a Christian. This is a very secular website, but I thought how interesting that they even agree that there are benefits. Look what they say, benefits for forgiving someone. So keep in mind, this is the Mayo Clinic. This is on their website. It said, letting go of grudges and bitterness can make you, or, or can make way for improved health and peace of mind. Forgiveness can lead to, what? Healthy relationships, improved mental health, less anxiety, stress, and hostility, fewer symptoms of depression, lower blood pressure, a strong immune system, improved heart health, improved self-esteem. So isn't that something? Even they can agree that that has forgiveness has a lot of impact on our relationships, our physical body, our mental state, right? So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Okay. So, how do we forgive when it's hard? Because sometimes it's hard, right? Like we mentioned before. What are some things? And this is this is not just for the kids. This is for adults too, but especially for kids because sometimes, you know, it, it's, it is hard. We want to acknowledge that it, it's hard. So what's the uh, number one thing we can do for somebody? And this might be, um, 
boy, like we talked about before, when someone, they're not changing their behavior, right? You, you forgave them and you give them another chance. They did the same thing. Maybe they stole, they keep stealing from you or hurting from you or lying to, from you to you or cheating. So this might be a case where you're like, hey, I forgive you, but I need to keep some distance, right? So how do we still, how do we honor that forgiveness? We can pray for them, right? That's the best thing that we can do for people in our lives. Pray for them, right? Mm -hmm. Pray for that their, their heart can be changed, that they would come to know they might not even know Jesus. They might not know Jesus. So pray for their salvation. Um, and then this is big. Don't celebrate their failures, right? I have been guilty of in the past, somebody that's done something really bad to you, something happens to them and you're like, ha ha, you know, don't do that, right? We can't celebrate other people's failures. Stop dwelling in the past. That's a big one, right? So, like God said, when he forgives our sins, he casts them into the sea. So, he's not dwelling on them, right? So, we can't dwell on things. So, we need to be done with it. When we've forgiven, we need to, we need to set that aside. We need to be done with it, right? So, we can't keep thinking about, well, think about how many of us have done that. We've said, yeah, I forgive you, and then we just kind of stick it in our back pocket, right? And they're like, well, tell later tonight when you made me upset or when you didn't do your chores, and then I bring it up again. We do that, right? We say, yeah, I forgive you, but then we keep bringing it up. That happens a lot in marriages, right? Do good to them. Where did my other picture go? I lost a pill. Oh. I had a cool picture of somebody helping somebody, but it was on a playground. So do good to them, help if they are in need. And it was just a picture of a kid helping somebody on the playground. So even though we might say, this person is, um, I'm gonna forgive them and show them love from a distance, they fall on the playground or something, or they need, you know, you, you can still go help them, right? There's, there's ways to help, help if they're in need. Don't speak poorly of them. Right, God warns us against, uh, about gossip, right? So we don't, if somebody maybe did something really bad, they stole from us, they, you know, cheated on us, they did something, and we've forgiven them, we don't need to run and tell all our friends, right? right. We just need to tell God that we need help forgiving them, right? We don't need to tell everybody. Now, there are times when people need warnings, right? We need to warn others and, and done in love. There, there's time and a place for things. But if we're just wanting to, is we always have to think about what our intention is when we're doing something like that. So we don't need to run around speaking poorly of them, right? That's not going to help. And then live peaceably with them and don't repay evil for evil. I have a scripture in here. I'm losing my... Well, we'll get to it in a minute, but there's a scripture that I have on one of the next slides here, but then it says, if it's possible, right, when possible, that it's not always going to be possible, but on our end, we can make it possible, right? We can live peaceably on our end with people, right? And don't repay evil for evil. That's such a, a carnal temptation in this world, right? If somebody does something really bad and we're like, we just want to ah, jump back, we want to yell back, we want to... Uh, do something bad back, but God says, don't do that, right? Don't do it. This is something my husband sent me. I thought this was kind of cool. It just shows two things, right? So this guy, he dropped his forgiveness off in the trash, right? Could have been the cross of Jesus, but... And then this guy's like, nope, not doing it. I'm going to hold on to it, carrying this sucker around. It says, holding a grudge doesn't make you strong. It makes you bitter. Makes you bitter. And forgiving doesn't make you weak, it sets you free. So we talked about before. So he just said, forget it. I'm not going to hold on to this. And now look, he's ah, he's doing good. And this guy is, doesn't look like he's doing so hot. He's holding on to that. And it weighs you down, right? Okay, this is fun. The rotten potato video. I got to switch off here. My friend Angel sent me a really cool video. And you know the cool thing about this was? I didn't know what I, I kind of knew what I was going to talk about today. And I was started thinking, well, where are some videos that I could do? And then my friend Angel sent me this and she's like, hey, maybe you could use this someday. But I needed it for this day. So it was kind of cool. Kind of, God works like that, right? He, he answers, he answers, ooh, he answers prayers even in little ways. 
Take four. A kindergarten teacher asks the children to write the name of the person they hate on a potato and put it in a plastic bag. Some had two or three potatoes, while some up to five potatoes. The teacher then told the children to carry the plastic bag with them wherever they go for one week. Days passed, and the children started to complain due to the unpleasant smell let out by the rotten potatoes. Besides, those having five potatoes also had to carry heavier bags. After one week, the teacher asked, How did you feel while carrying the potatoes with you for one week? The children let out their frustrations and started complaining of the trouble that they had to go through having to carry the heavy and smelly potatoes wherever they go. The teacher said, This is exactly the situation when you carry your hatred for somebody inside your heart. The stench of hatred will contaminate your heart and you will carry it with you wherever you go. If you cannot tolerate the smell of rotten potatoes for just one week, can you imagine what is it like to have the stench of hatred in your heart for your lifetime? Forgiving others is the best attitude to take. Akin Okay, so forgiveness from others, right? When we have wronged others, we should ask for forgiveness if we can, right? Mm -hmm. If we've done something, boy, we've, we lost our temper, we, we did something not nice to somebody, we should ask for forgiveness. Yeah, Romans 12, 17 says, Repay no one evil for evil. This is what we were referring to in the last one. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible as much as it depends on you. So that take, that's what we were saying. We can only control ourselves. So on our end, as much, it, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. When we forgive, though, we must do so without expectation, right? So in an ideal world, it's wonderful. If we had an argument with a friend or a husband or, or a coworker, you know, we forgive them, they forgive us. But reality is sometimes that doesn't happen, right? We can't control, we can ask for forgiveness from somebody and, and uh, repent, but whether or not they uh, accept that forgiveness and forgive us back is, is not in our control, right? So we just need to make sure that when we're forgiving, it's not conditional. We're not saying, hey, I'm gonna forgive you if you forgive me, right? <clears throat> Okay, what forgiveness is not? Forgiveness is not an emotion, right? Forgiveness isn't something that we just feel because we don't have control of our feelings all the time. But what we do, are, it's, it's a decision we make and it's in our will. We have control over our will, right? So it is a decision. Forgiveness proceeds from our will and our will is under our control. So it's a decision we have to make. We have to make that decision. It's not conditional, like I was saying before. It doesn't say, well, I'm gonna forgive you if you, you know, go to the store for me. I'm gonna forgive you if you forgive me back. I'm gonna forgive you if you let me, if you pick me first on the team, right? It's something that, it's, it's a permanent thing. And, and again, tempor it's not temporary. It's not temporary. We're not saying, yeah, I forgive you right now while we're on the playground, but then later on, I might, you know what, I might be a little bit upset again. So it's not temporary. It's a permanent decision to forgive somebody. And guess what? This is important. Forgiveness, when we receive forgiveness or we give forgiveness, it doesn't mean that there might not still be consequences, right? Mm -hmm. There's people, our, the jails and prisons, I used to work in a jail for many, many years, and a lot of those people repented and turned their life over to Jesus and they were forgiven. But guess what? They still, we, there's earthly consequences. There's natural consequences that we have to um, own up to for our actions. So it doesn't mean that there's not gonna be consequences. So just because you're still dealing with those consequences doesn't mean that you haven't received forgiveness from God, okay? And in fact, th sometimes those consequences are a blessing because if there was no consequences, we would just go back to doing things, right? Okay, so who do we have to forgive and how often? There's a really great scripture and I have a little video here. Uh, we must forgive everyone, right? Our friends, our family, our classmates, teachers, and even and most ex especially our enemies. Forgiveness is something we must do on an ongoing basis. It doesn't happen just once, right? And we've all will encounter people in our lives if we haven't that we need to forgive more, right? They're maybe not walking with the Lord or they're struggling with things and, and we're, it's gonna take an extra dose of strength and endurance from God to, to continue to 
um, to, to be able to forgive them. So in Matthew 18, 21, I have a little video here, and then I think that pretty much wraps it up. But um, it's about the parable of the unforgiving servant, and I think this is really, really powerful. So let me see here. just want to make sure. Okay. Maybe some of you have heard this. I was playing basketball with my friend, and he said something that made me really mad. It's not easy to forget when we feel like that, is it? Who said anything about forgiving? Besides, I've forgiven him before. Do I have to forgive him again? In the Bible, Peter asked Jesus a question just like that. Peter asked if he should forgive someone seven times. Seven times? That's a lot. What did Jesus say? Jesus said we should forgive someone 70 times 7 times. Let's see, 0 times 7 is 0, and then 7 times 7. Wait, I'm supposed to forgive him 490 times? How am I supposed to keep track of all that? <laughs> that was Jesus' point. We aren't supposed to keep track. We're just supposed to forgive every time. Jesus told a story so Peter could understand. A king had a servant who borrowed millions of dollars from him. That's a lot of money. You could buy a lot of basketballs with that. Right. And there was no way the servant could ever pay the king back. The king ordered that the servant and his whole family be sold. That meant they would all be slaves, even the kids. The servant begged the king for more time to pay the debt. So did the king give him more time? No. The king did something even better. He forgave the servant's debt. He erased it like it had never even existed. Whew. The servant must have been happy. He was. Then the servant left the king and went to another servant who owed him money. Not millions like he had owed the king. Not even half a million. The guy owed the servant a few thousand dollars. The servant demanded instant payment. The man begged and pleaded, but the unforgiving servant wouldn't listen. He had the man arrested and put in prison until his debt was paid. That's awful. The king thought it was awful too. In fact, when the king found out what happened, he ordered the unforgiving servant to come back. Uh oh. The king asked the servant why he had been so unforgiving when the king had forgiven his huge debt. Then he put the servant in prison until the debt could be paid. <coughs> Jesus said that when we don't forgive others with our whole heart, we are just like that unforgiving servant. Ah, oh, I get it now. Since God forgives me all the time for small things and big things, I should do the same and forgive others. Well said, my friend. Well said. Interesting, huh? You know another neat thing about that parable? I don't know how where, how factual this is, but I know Derek Prince shared on one of his that one time he did all the math about the parable and he said that the first servant, when they did all the math, that it was somewhere around like $6 million that the first guy got his debt erased. And then the other guy that wouldn't forgive, it was like $17 or something really small, right? And you think about like all the laundry list of things, especially as we get older, that God has on us, right? That he, he's forgiven us for. And then there's something little like, I can't forgive my friend because they maybe told a lie to me. Think about that. Like, is that worth it? You know, that's, it, it's not. So, um, oh, okay. And when we, when we do forgive, this is what I want to end on. So what are some of the things that happen when we do forgive? You know, reconciliation. It sometimes, right, where we're reconciled back with God, with Jesus, He, He, we're, that, that's restored. Our relationships, and sometimes we don't see reconciliation right away, right? But we're we're setting an example of of being Christ followers by doing that. Sometimes um, relationships are reconciled down the road. We have peace, right? Like when that guy in that little cartoon dumped all that stuff we can have peace back in our life right peace that we did what we're supposed to again it doesn't mean that we're gonna get the same response from somebody else but harmony understanding fellowship right our fellowship with god because that's hindered when we're not forgiving people right healing sometimes physical healing so many 
volunteers here, the ministers and counselors and stuff could give you testimony after testimony, I'm sure, of, of healing that took place, spiritual healing, physical healing, healing in the mind, when people have finally forgiven after years and years, right? That's why we're telling the kids, right? Because what we see here is that people maybe have let things fester for years and decades and it, it, it wears on them, right? So we wanna help you guys realize, forgive quickly, right? So that stuff doesn't happen to you. And freedom, that's total freedom, right? This girl here is, she's got freedom. So remember that Jesus is our ultimate example of forgiving others, right? What did he say when he was dying? A horrible, horrible death on the cross, right? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He asked for forgiveness. I'm sure that none of us have encountered, uh, you know, anything happening to us. We surely haven't because we're here and we're breathing like Jesus has had done. But he was quick to say, Father, forgive them. He wanted his Father in heaven to forgive them. So... And remember, we serve a God that delights to show mercy. He wants to forgive us. It's not like he's up there just angry and he wants to, right? But there are conditions. We need to forgive others. We need to confess our sins and we need, we need to trust him, right? And, and work on a relationship with him. So just remember that, that he's a God that delights to show mercy, right? And that's all I have. Anybody learn anything? Like one or two things? Cool. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad I came. Awesome. So what we want to offer to you now is um, we're going to turn the camera off. And if you guys would like to talk to some of us, we'd like to find out more about you guys and, and pray with you guys. And um, maybe there's maybe this is a good day that for that we can, there's somebody that we need to forgive that we can do that, right? Cool. Okay. I'm so glad you guys all came. If you're not staying for prayer, it was so nice to see your faces and have you here. And I hope you gained something today. And um, watch the website. We're going to be trying to add in um, and do these a, a little more often um, on the first Saturday of the month. So we'd love to have you guys. We'll cover a different topic. And you can always stay for prayer. And um, so we'll come around and connect with you guys and, and see if we can pray for you, okay? All right. Thank you.